Hi, I'm Dr. Denise Moffat and today I'm going to show you how to bathe a cat. And this is not a joke, sometimes your cat needs to be bathed. The one thing you want to remember is you want to have all your stuff together before you start the bath because when the cat is freaking out and wet, it's going to try to jump out of the sink and you won't have time to get your stuff together. So this is what you're going to need. You'll need a cat carrier to put the cat in after you bathe the cat. So I have a cat carrier here and I have a nice fluffy towel so that we can um, put the dryer in front of it and let the cat um, feel the air because it's not going to want to stay where the dryer is. Okay. Then um, we need to put cotton balls down the ears and so I just have one cotton ball here and that's all I'll really need and I'll pull the cotton ball in half or even into thirds and we'll stick a little bit of the cotton ball down each ear. The reason why you do that is because the pH of the ear is about 2 to 3 normally. So if that soap gets down there or any water mixed with soap, the pH will be disrupted and you can get um, bacterial and yeast infections grow. And usually the, the animal, especially the dogs, um, will react about 5 days after the bath and then you'll be taking your dog to the vet in about a week for a, a fancy expensive ear treatment. So it's easier just to put the cotton balls down the ears before the bath. Then, the other thing is, um, there's a lot of hair that comes off the animal, so if you comb the pet before you do the bath, there will be less hair that you need to clean out of the sink after you're done. And so my favorite um, tools to use are a little slicker brush, and this is just a hard slicker brush that you can get at the grocery store here, and it has a little bit of fine teeth in there. I like to get the mats out and um, tangles and undercoat out that's going to come out with a flea comb and this particular flea comb is from France and it has some very small teeth in there and so this will actually pick up um, fleas uh, and a lot of dead skin if there's dead skin. And then for getting out the tangles and the big mats I like to use this kind of a comb um, or you can actually use a hearts comb with a little black candle that you can get in the grocery store for $2.49. And then afterwards, we'll clean out the ears with some just basic Q-tips. And I'm using the Q-tips that you have because you're going to be doing this at home and you won't have the fancy Q-tips that veterinarians have. Then the other thing we want to do is we want to have a leash ready. Now, I just have a dog's leash and what we're going to do is we're going to put this around the cat's neck, cinch it up like that, and then we're going to put that around the sink and tie it around the sink so the cat can, can't get away too far. We'll want to use a good quality um, flea shampoo or a grooming shampoo that your veterinarian prescribes. Um, pet shampoos are a little bit different pH than human shampoos. So using a human shampoo on a pet doesn't work so well and can lead to skin problems. So now that we're ready, I'm going to warm up the water so it's just right. It's just like putting the water on your wrist to test some mother's milk or when you put a, a bottle, baby bottle. Um, and so we want it a little bit warmer than that. And I'm going to have that water coming through the sink and coming through the faucet. And then I'm going to find our cat Dagny and she's going to be the model for you today.